Hey everybody, this video is going to be a tutorial about how to use Room 360's basic features. Though Room 360 does teach you a lot about sound and acoustics, it's still fundamentally an advanced piece of software and does require some knowledge in order to use properly. So this video is not going to cover any advanced acoustics or digital audio concepts, but instead is going to focus on how to use Room 360 in a basic sense. So it is going to assume that you already know how to install and use audio plugins and know some things about how to use digital audio software. So now that that's out of the way, let's begin. First, I'm going to open up Room 360 and delete all the walls. You can delete a wall by clicking it and then pressing delete. You can select multiple walls by holding down shift as you click them. You can also select multiple items by holding down control and dragging the mouse. But we'll be careful not to select the source or microphones too. So let's just take care of that. And okay, we now have a blank slate, perfect for demonstrating how to position and orient the source and microphones. So to get a better view, I'm gonna zoom in with control scroll. So we can clearly see that we have one source and then two SM57 microphones. The source is currently set to a voice emission pattern, which means that if I rotate the source away from the microphones by grabbing the emission pattern in the view, it's going to sound a bit quieter and a bit more muffled, much like if I was speaking away from you. And I'll go ahead and turn it back. So I can actually pan the source left and right by moving it to the left or right relative to the positions of the microphones, which means that now you should be hearing me from the right side and now you should be hearing me from the left side. But it's not just the source we can change the position of, we can also change the positions of the individual microphones. So now I'm gonna spread them farther apart in space so I can demonstrate how the source will sound more loudly in the right or left channel depending on which one it's closest to. So closer to the left and closer to the right. Now going with the theme of position, orientation, and volume, Let's explore the polar pickup and emission patterns. So you can see that if I select the source and microphone, the respective buttons and emission patterns activate in the source and mic panel. If there's no source or mic selected, the dials and emission patterns will be disabled because there's nothing to apply the changes to. It's crucial to note that if there are multiple selected elements, any change in the source or mic panel, or really any dial for that matter, will affect all selected elements. For instance, the view bands dial right here, lower left hand corner. There's one for the source and the microphone panel. It doesn't affect the result, but it does allow you to closely visually inspect the polar patterns for both of them. And that's pretty important for what we're doing here. Let's use the view band dial to inspect the various polar patterns for the different types of sources and microphones. So we can see here with the SM57, like most microphones, it's not that choosy at the lowest frequencies. But as we move the dial up, we can see it becomes highly selective towards the forward direction as we move to the upper 10, 20 kilohertz range. Now, I'm gonna select both microphones so we can explore the various microphone options that come with Room 360. Currently, there's only five, but I'll be adding more eventually. And hopefully someday, I'll add the ability to import your own transfer functions. So, option zero is Omni. That means it records equally from all directions across all frequencies. And it's important to note this is not an Omni microphone. This is a true Omni zero bias. We can do the same with the source as well, just for reference. Okay, so back to the microphones. We have the Omni, of course, the SM57, cardioid pattern, the SM58, or super cardioid, as you can see, there are two distinct lobes, and then the bidirectional NT2A, which is a bit subtler and good for recording sounds both in front of and behind a given microphone. Now, the last two are very special, a symmetrical left and right ear pair transfer function. This allows you to achieve pretty decent spatialization but it does require some extra setup. So I'm gonna select the left ear and change that to the left ear pattern, the right ear, change that to the right ear pattern, and then place them about a head's length distance apart. Now note here that each square is one meter. Now I'm gonna use the view band dial again so we can see just how extreme the polar pickup pattern is for the ears. These major differences in the sensitivity of each ear to each frequency from each angle are what the brain's audio processing center use to very accurately infer the position and distance of various sound sources. So let's demonstrate. But for one extra point of accuracy, I'm going to place a very small wall in between the microphones to simulate a head. We can add a wall by simply double clicking and dragging to create one. Then we can resize it and drag it around. So I'm gonna make this one really small and put it just about between the two microphones at roughly the right size. So now I'm gonna go ahead and drag the source to the left side. 
So here I am from the left. And then I'm going to come around the front and go to the right side. And then I'm going to circle around behind us and then stop at the original position. Now, you might have noticed it wasn't especially convincing. To make it better, we can actually add some walls to put the brain into a more familiar environment. And that's a great excuse to talk about the walls and various acoustic properties we can give them in Room 360. Now, I'd like to demonstrate the acoustic effect of just one wall, but that's a bit too subtle and quiet for a YouTube video. Instead, I'll let you explore that yourself. But what I'm going to do now is create a hallway. So just one wall to your right and one to your left. So we can hear the hallway if I click my tongue. Hear that? You probably recognize the sound. That's a hallway. If I move them closer together, it sounds like this. And if I move them farther apart, we get a much more exaggerated ping pong effect. Now, let's make this into a room by adding a front and back wall. I can add wall segments by double-clicking a vertex and then dropping it where I'd like it to snap. So there's the front, and then there's the back. So you can hear right away, it's already a lot more reverberant inside, and it's also, honestly, it's a bit difficult to hear me, so let's get closer. I'm going to move the microphone closer to where I'm standing, so that I'm louder, but the echoes generally aren't. This is how you adjust the wet dry mix. No knobs or sliders, just simulation. So now I think is the perfect time to get into the other side of Room 360. Not just the source and mic positions, but also the ability to sculpt the acoustic properties of each wall. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this reflectivity down, maybe so it's more like inside. And it might sound like there's actually no echo left, but that's not true. The acoustics, although you can't hear them directly, are still giving your brain crucial information for how to interpret what it's hearing. Good example, if I move over to your right, now I actually sound like I'm far away. I'm not just quiet. And that's entirely due to the acoustic information the walls give the whole scene. Now I can demonstrate this by deleting the walls. So I'm going to delete every wall now, one, two, all of them, and then... Now it sounds a lot more boring, like just a normal gain and a stereo panner. And that's a great way to like sort of prove that Room 360 isn't just all of these features individually, but it's the whole package. It's how it all ties together to deliver this whole like extra level of acoustic realism. And testament to that dedication to realism, although it wasn't the hardest part of making Room 360, I did go and implement the ISO standard for atmospheric absorption over distance. So these three knobs right here, your altitude, your temperature, and your humidity, they all influence the atmospheric absorption, that's decibels per kilometer per kilohertz, right here in this chart. Now, it might not seem that important, but it actually is. The source itself might not be that far away, but the path the sound takes as it bounces around the room, 10 seconds of reverb, that's 30 kilometers or so. Um, that's a lot of distance, and that's a lot of atmospheric absorption. And the longer the reverb tail is, the more of an outsized effect this absorption has on the final result. Yeah, I know, it's not really a noticeable difference, but for the nerds, nerds find it important. And really, it's just mostly proof that Room 360 was created with the principled approach. So with that, I think we've gone over mostly everything that I wanted to cover today. I may have missed a few details. If I did, I'll make a second more detailed tutorial for each individual feature later. With that, goodbye.